Welcome to the second video of the Extreme Network series exploring network automation and workflows. In this video, the workflows component of Extreme Cloud IQ is used to build a simple but powerful workflow to download a malicious IP address block list from an internet security vendor and then dynamically implement this list across the campus firewalls. And note, in this particular example, no Python scripting will be utilized. So let's jump right in and create this new workflow. First, move to the Workflows tab within the Extreme Cloud IQ site engine, as this is the graphical development environment where new workflows are created. As a first step, let's build a new workflow group to provide storage for new workflows as they are being developed. Simply right-click on Workflows within the tree, and in the Create Workflow Group dialog window, enter the group name of Under Development. However, on this system, this is an unneeded step as the under development group already exists. The next step is to create a new workflow by right clicking on the under development group and selecting the option create new workflow. Let's name our workflow dynamically update firewall block list. And also set an appropriate description for this tool. Setting the description field is the best practice to ensure that all other network administrators can quickly understand the purpose for the workflow. At this point, the new workflow has been created, but the canvas is completely blank. To continue, a workflow activity must be dragged to the canvas and customized. As mentioned in the introduction video, there are activities for switch CLI commands, Python scripts, email alerts, shell commands, and HTTP requests. For this workflow, we'll begin by dragging a shell activity from the palette and onto the canvas. This shell activity will allow us to issue any desired Linux command from the XIQ site engine operating system. However, before configuring the activity, let's first provide it a name. To do so, double click on the icon and enter the name Download Firehole Malicious IP Address Block List. As a side note, it is a best practice to provide highly descriptive names that detail the specific function for each activity, as this provides even greater clarity to the visually connected components. The shell activity is now ready to be configured. By selecting the Inputs tab, the actual commands that will be issued by the shell activity can be configured. In this example, we will paste in the specific curl command that first performs a secure web request to the firehole.org internet server, then downloads the malicious IP address list, and finally writes the file to the slash TMP directory on the XIQ site engine. Additionally, the Terminate Workflow on Failure option is selected. This option simply ensures that if the results from the shell activity command were to fail, that the execution of the workflow would immediately end. Lastly, when configuring workflow components, it is a best practice to save your work after any significant amount of change. While the workflow is not yet complete, the first activity can be tested in isolation to see if it performs as expected. However, before the first activity can be tested, it must be connected to both the start and the end icons. Once the changes are saved, the option to verify the workflow should be selected. The verify button does not validate that the activities have properly configured inputs, but instead that the activity icons are linked together in an acceptable manner and that there's a properly connected start and end to the workflow. The incomplete workflow can now be tested as the components have been successfully connected. However, when selecting the Run button, a device selection dialog is prompted. This dialog box allows the network administrator to select a collection of switches for which the workflow will operate against. However, in this example, there is no need to interact with a collection of switches, so the device dialog function must be disabled before continuing. 
Moving to the Variables tab displays the default variables assigned to each newly created workflow. Note that the first variable in the list is called Devices. When this variable is present within a workflow, the Devices dialog window is opened at runtime. However, by deleting this variable, the Devices dialog is not launched when the workflow is executed. So we can now run this workflow again, and we are immediately asked if we want to navigate to the workflow's detail view. Selecting this option takes us to the results of the workflow execution. If the activity icons happen to be red, they ended in a failed state. Icons in gray were not executed at all, and as occurred in this case, the icon is green to indicate the activity ran to a successful completion. If we select the Show Output button, the details of the activity execution are displayed. In this example, the terminal output from the curl command is displayed, indicating the volume of data that was downloaded. If desired, the malicious IP address list can be fully verified by opening an SSH session to the XIQ site engine and displaying the created firehole text file located in the temp directory. After verifying the shell activity successfully downloaded the list of malicious IP addresses, the workflow can be further expanded to perform the remaining tasks. To continue, a second shell task is dragged to the canvas and is assigned the name Copy Block List to Internal Web Server. Similar to the first shell activity, the Inputs tab is selected and an SCP command is applied. This particular SCP command securely copies the previously downloaded malicious IP address file to an internal web server that is available for all campus firewalls. As with the first shell activity, select the Terminate Workflow on Failure checkbox to ensure that the workflow properly terminates if the SCP command is not successful. But the workflow is not complete yet. The second shell activity must be properly connected. First, the connection from the download activity to the end icon needs to be deleted. Second, the download activity then needs to be connected to the copy activity. And then finally, the copy activity needs to be connected to the end icon. Again, these changes must be saved. And then the workflow verified is properly connected. The completed workflow can now be executed again. And upon returning to the results screen, both the download and the copy activities are green and therefore successfully completed. By selecting the copy activity and hitting the show output button, the details of the SCP copy command can be examined and verified. Note the transferred and received bytes from the results of the SCP command. As a best practice, the SCP copy command did not use a visible password when copying the block list to the local web server. Instead, SSH keys were utilized to provide increased security over an embedded password. Although the workflow is now complete and the results verified, the purpose for this workflow is to download this malicious IP address list on a periodic basis, perhaps daily or even hourly. To address this requirement, the completed workflow must be first saved as a task. To do this, run the workflow again, but this time select the Save Task option. In the Save Task dialog box, apply the task name of Dynamically Update Firewall Block List. Finally, cancel the execution of the workflow, as the only goal was to save the task. Once the task has been saved, it can be verified in the Save Task tab with the previously defined task name. 
And now to the final step in the process, where the save task is scheduled to automatically execute on a periodic basis. By moving to the Schedule Task tab, a new scheduled task can be added, configured as a workflow task, set to execute at a specific time, and configured with an email alert to the network administrators. Once the scheduled task is saved, the next runtime is displayed based on the configured schedule. The entire workflow is now complete with an updated copy of the malicious IP address list stored on the local web server every day at 1 a.m. All campus firewalls can now be configured to reload this block list on a daily basis. That concludes this workflow's exercise. Thanks for watching.